can someone explain this to me? Herman, I know you're in chat. I blame Herman for this. No matter what happens. Volcanic FTK, I blame Herman. What's going on, fellas? We have Ricardo McBride right here. Ricardo, what did you do today? Uh, I got fourth place at the Stone Mountain Regional with Volcanic FTK. Alright, awesome. Uh, is there... You want to go ahead and get down to the profile? Yeah, let's go uh, right on into it. So, the Volcanic portion of this deck is the most significant portion of it. Like, all of these cards are pretty crucial to what it's trying to do. And, uh, like, if there's any questions, feel free to ask. But I'm just going to get right into it. So, the main engine piece of the volcanic dude i can't focus on the profile when the the music is jamming in the background his volcanic trooper uh he has two effects which are both super important on summon he searches for a volcanic card and um as an ignition effect he can discard a card to give your opponent a bomb token that second effect is vital um for dude, the that's a lot of cards how many is that that has to be 60. ftk so I mean, yeah, he just he just does a lot. Uh, following, <laughs> Dude, what? Look at how many cards that is. Him up, there is three shell. Uh, if you've ever played Volcanics before, you know what he does when he's engraved. You pay five to get a copy of himself, and he's important as he's ever been. Uh, followed by three scatter shot, who is kind of the worst one of the Volcanics when you draw him, uh, depending on your hand composition. But he is important for another card in the deck that I don't think I would cut because it it solves too many problems and. When you're not doing the FTK, it reinforces your board um, a lot. Plus, funny enough, the extra five when he's sent to grave just helps you get there sometimes. Uh, the next one of the very strong members of the Volcanic Package is Rimfire. He has two effects that are both once per turn uh, when he hits grave. You can banish him to send a Volcanic Monster from your deck to grave, or you can banish a Blaze Accelerator card from your field or grave so to... Um, just before we continue, the FTK for Fire King, they didn't say yet what they do, but it's, I'm pretty sure it's just a combination of different little burns or sometimes bigger burns, right? It's like you have a bunch of cards that burn. And so you come, I think combined enough of them, they do 8,000, right? But they, they do have to like pass over to the opponent, right? I think that's the, the, the thing they need to like. They need to, like, pass. Yeah, okay, yeah. Place the Blaze Accelerator card face up on your I'm, No, I'm pretty sure it's not Blaze Phoenix. I'm pretty sure it's not, uh, it's not, it's not an actual FTK. I mean, it's like a pseudo FTK kind of thing. Uh, he's, like, incredible. The fact, he's basically a two-for-one. He's just, yeah, he's great. They uh, following up, okay. we have two Emperor, who is both, um... An essential part of the FTK, but just like a really good card in general. Uh, for those who don't know what he does, he can summon himself from hand or grave by banishing either three pyro monsters from your grave or one blaze accelerator card from field or grave. Um, on summon, he burns your opponent for five for each banished pyro and place uh, sets a volcanic spell trap. That's the main. Um, way you enable your FTK uh, and then also when he's on field when you are when you fall short of FTK he burns your opponent for five every time they special so if you manage what I do think about the volcan I, I I've said before I think the volcanic cards are pretty good um so I think what makes this deck at least capable of doing well in a tournament is that I don't think you're completely lost whenever you don't pull off the OTK or slash FTK or when you have to go second. Like, I don't think this deck is completely dependent on FTKing the opponent. Like, I'm pretty sure you have other stuff that you can do that can win you games. It'd be interesting to know how often or, like, how many games they, like, went first and how many times they had to pull off the FTK. Maybe they're... Maybe they say that. ...to not FTK them. Playing into this will usually kill them, which is just as well. Uh, and that also plays in the other aspect of this deck where... It, it forces your opponent to end the game. If they don't end the game and you get another turn, you will end the game pretty much every time. Um, the main search target... If you get to a second turn, your opponent usually dies immediately to Volcanic Emperor Summon Effect. For our trooper, our three Volcanic Blades... The, the, the one that you played at YCS Bologna, you, you played like the same concept, but you didn't play the FTK cards, right? You just played like a Volcanic Fire King tile, but no FTK cards, right? His Accelerator. I have to go over this as well because, again, people might not know what it does. 
Uh, it has two effects that are soft once per turns. Um, you target a monster your opponent controls and send a level yeah. one pyro from your field to grave and destroy it. This card is really cool. Uh, and you can also once per turn special summon a volcanic monster from your hand. So that's once per copy of this card, which is really good with Rimfire, uh, wherever he wound up. So if you activate one and send a Rimfire, you can get another copy of it to then do that again and then function as another extender for whatever volcanics you might have in your hand. Uh, this card is one of the main pieces you use to break boards and also a crucial combo piece going first, funny enough, because of Trooper. Uh, this is a brick that you have to play to activate it. The card says to activate it, you have to send this from deck to grave. Um, it is a little whack, but sometimes you draw it going second and it's actually pretty strong because it'll either just in conjunction <laughs> so, with like a scatter shot or a shell. It's not actually that can... bad at breaking boards if you have like a shell and your opponent doesn't out it. Like it, it can force your opponent to make like SP Little Knight or something like that if, if they, yeah trade for a lot of monsters on board or people will just like shotgun things to remove it which is also fine because so much love in these profiles and that is why i kind of wanted to do this today because that's kind of what happens in a tier zero format you have like three kinds of people right you have people that play tier zero you have people that play like troll despair anti-decks like flu and stun and then you have people who just who just say fuck it it's tier zero format i'm gonna just play what i like and what i think is cool right and that's the kind of stuff we're looking at today uh, the next, this is the enabler for your scatter shot, is reload. Uh, it has two effects. People might be familiar with it, but in case they aren't, you um, when it's face up on field, so, you can send so a today is not about today is not about like evaluating each of these decks and like how good exactly they are because I mean none of them are the best deck in the format. We're not trying to find that today. We already know what that is. They're all like some level of playable rogue, right? And so like we don't need to get into the specifics and all nitty gritty with it. Like I, I just wanted to like give some uh, exposure to the creativity in the format and all that kind of stuff. I think, uh, I think it's the, the main point of this, which I think is cool. And it from hand to grave to draw a card. And while it's in grave, you can banish it to send a, uh, a volcanic monster from your deck to grave. So that does a few things. Like One reload, I guess no goods. Yeah, I don't think they're super focused on like the board clear with the scatter shot because they're trying to do the burn kill anyway. So technically no need to really clear your opponent's board over and over and over said one it turns scattershot into a very strong interruption but also it insulates your ftk from a few things that would otherwise stop it um and the way i set up the board in this deck it helps to make sure the ftk is going through there's very there's almost no non-engine that stops it once you get to it so and this helps with that uh, and then our only emperor target is a mission which is also the uh, key piece of the ftk it has two effects one is you target a pyro monster on the field if it's yours you burn for half its attack if it's your opponent's you burn for all of its attack and then its second effect lets you summon a volcanic monster from your deck ignoring summoning conditions so um that's just really good like i said if you don't ftk them you can make your opponent have to play through two of these or play into two of them which means every time they special they'll take five and on your turn he's going to be doing an average of two thousand damage to them it's usually going to be 25 but um they take 25 off this and then if you have two of those on board, that leaves them not very many summons before they die. Dude, oh, anyone here? The voice gives me major Dub K Dad vibes. Anyone here where I'm coming from? Anyone remember? Another volcanic trap that I kind of sort of wanted to play that's just um, a monster negate, basically, for an effect on the field. But I didn't want to put too many bricks in the deck, so I don't have that here. I just played the stuff that... Uh, okay, Boomer. Yeah, play. sorry. So that's all the volcanic cards, and then... Followed up, of course, we have a Snake Eye package, which is three the Adel Star and three Wanted. Um, Don't ult me. You just really want to see this, so I maxed out on it, even though it kind of sucks if you draw too many copies of her, but it's better than not seeing her at all, usually. Uh, then following up, we have one of each of the little roaches. Uh, one little and one roaches. big roach. Oh, there's even Birch. Do you need Birch? One of all of them was plenty. I never really wanted any more, because um, I'd rather be giving my normal summon to Trooper, honestly. And I had way too many times where I drew him as is so i never wanted two of them but all of these guys are really good like if you've played with these cards or against these cards you know what they do and they're they're the best roaches. volcanic support that's ever come out and these engines bridge really well into each other oh and a nice thing to point out if there was no bonfire yet i mean i'm sure there's bonfire like there's no way this deck doesn't play bonfire you wouldn't realize since this sends a level one pyro if you're doing a line i thought this was rogue it, it can still be rogue if it plays the snake eye cards there's so many people that when they see a single card that is represented in a meta deck, they, they immediately go completely brain AFK and be like, oh god, you're such a meta sheep. This is a 60 card volcanic deck, and because they showed a snake eye engine, you're like, oh, I'm so disappointed. I thought this was a rogue deck. Like, come on, man. 
Princess because this is a fire deck and obviously we're playing for Meet the Princess, you can dump one of your Snake Eyes to then bring back off of her and extend from there. So all those guys are great. Two head um, energy. And they help you just make a board when you're not FTKing. Massive two head didn't energy. Happen Pretty much every time I went first in that event, uh, I FTKed, even through like two hand traps. Uh, then next you have a Divine Simple. This card's great. Um, baited? Helps nah, you play nah, nah, nah. You can't just get out of the situation by saying baited kick W. That doesn't work. That doesn't work all the time. I, I simply won't believe you. You were serious. I could see it. I could, f I could feel your two-head aura. Through things, around things, just gives you extra cards to extend. Uh, it also helps you set up OTK lines for when you're going second and you think they might have nib, so then you can kill them after they nib you. And then the one original simple spoils, because it's phenomenal, obviously. Uh, then even more engine, we have a small <laughs> Fire King package. Dude, everyone's here. Fire like Kings too. Uh, nah, one of Meta Sheep. Fire King Meta Sheep. Each of all these guys, disgust me. Uh, two island and one sanctuary. This could probably go to one, but you do like opening it <laughs> because it, you know, it just lets you play through things more. Um, he's probably the worst one. I cited him out a lot, but I felt like five was the right count to have. Um, OG Kieran, yeah, OG yeah, Kieran also... is actually kind of good. If OG Kieran gets destroyed, you can foolish any fire monster. You know what these cards do. They do the same thing here, except that we play this to destroy off of this, and when this is destroyed, it sends a fire monster from your deck to the grave. So that's another way to make your engines bridge into the volcanic cards uh, and all of those are really good i never regretted them and then even more engine we have three and steady <laughs> oh, one happy oh, oh, dude, and two nah. king Sark. Uh, this is herman's these fault are just to get this is herman's fault this thing is herman's fault i blame herman the deck another push because i kind of felt like i needed it you could probably get away with one of this but it's good to have a second one on like follow-up turns um yeah these are these are just good people zombie vampire is crazy which is the only rank eight in the extra deck spoiler warning i guess but those guys were Awesome, I never regretted having them. Uh, then the main FTK enabler is Greater Inari Fire and Spiritual Fire Arc. Oh, is this one of the, this is the weird thing that you just summon straight from your deck without even, does it even start a chain? It's just, I, I always imagine, I've never played one of these cards and I've never played against anyone using these cards. But just like, I find the concept behind these super weird because like, imagine your opponent in like an open game state just picks up their deck and goes through it. <laughs> like, <laughs> it's so, it, it seems so awkward to me. You're just like, and especially like, you, you pick up your 60 card deck in an open game state, your opponent is like, what the hell are you doing? And you're like, hold up, I, I got it. Give me a second, give me a minute. I'll, I'll have it to you, you'll, you'll see in a second. Hold up, no, any, any moment now, any moment, it'll make sense, trust me. It'll make sense, I'll get there. <laughs> A lot of people don't know what this guy does. He is one of the um, undefined from deck summons. Um, so he summons by sending a level one or level four lower monster and a spellcaster from field to grave. And when he's sent to grave, he adds this from your deck to your hand. Also, on his summon by that effect, you burn your opponent uh, for the attack of a monster they have on your field. Uh, and I'll explain how exactly the FTA goes when we get there. But uh, this card just says, <laughs> Oh, I cited it out. Imagine. <laughs> Imagine you cited it out and you go through your 60 card deck like four times. You can't find it. That'd be so funny, man. Deal damage to your opponent equal that monster's attack. So basically, what would even happen, dude? You just picked up your deck for no reason and went through it. <laughs> oh, no, I don't even want to think about that. I don't even want to think about that. It was like, I thought it was there. Man. Sorry. I, I just felt like picking up my deck and looking through it. <laughs> this plus emperor plus a mission to kill them um then even more engine there are two magician souls oh uh, god this is like the random monsters in a gem synchron this is a good pivot sin for the baby kieran uh this is just more access to the avel star and also a way to get extra draws because this deck has a lot of spots where it winds up with random extra spell traps on field uh, those are all really good was very happy to have them and then of course the three bonfire because we're playing uh deck full of pyro monsters it doesn't just get snake eyes it gets everything in this deck uh, and then a one of Monster Born has another random extender. It's also just randomly stronger this format because of fire mirrors, basically. Uh, and then a one for one because it's like the best extender you can play with this stuff. Uh, and then fire recovery. If people don't know this card, it's basically like a bad Monster Born. You activate it, you target a fire monster in your grave, and you send a card from hand to grave and then special summon that monster. But while it's in grave, you can banish it to target three banished fire monsters, or banish or grave fire monsters, shuffle them in deck to draw a card. Uh, that's really good in combination with Shell, because it turns one copy of Shell into, like, five cards, so that was great. And then the only non-engine in the main deck is three triple tag of talent, because everybody <laughs> else is on hand traps. Um, not 60, right? Combo, that has to be This will rip their hand trap out of their hand, or if your hand just needs a little more gas, can draw you cards going second. Obviously, it's really strong in the boards. I don't get the one recovery with no goods. Nah, you don't get it. You don't get it. You, uh, you either have it or you don't, right? So, it's whatever, man. Um, 
yeah, I mean, that's the main deck. And I was relatively happy with all of it. Like I said, the only thing I'd consider changing is maybe cutting Island to one and maybe not playing Avarta at all, but uh, it was all very good. I Well, this is a Highlander deck. One, like, I think three die rolls in the event, so I went second a lot and was killing people uh, in through their boards. And I guess I'll, like I said, I'll explain a little bit of that when we get to it. Uh, this is my bomb token. Real quick, what's your main deck count? Uh, 60, 60 double sleeved. So. <laughs> okay, that explains it. Okay, it's double, it has inner sleeves, okay. Uh, maybe you can make it smaller, but all the cards are really good. If you have 60, you get to play more good cards, you know? <laughs> but... Sure. That aside, we'll go on to the extra deck, which is 15, obviously. Uh, pretty standard fire stuff, really. It's um, Link Rebo, everybody knows this little guy's great. Uh, Anima, which isn't just like a gotcha, like the other fire decks were playing for a while. It's actually part of the combo, because if you recall, Inari Fire, it's a spellcaster, is a spellcaster. Uh, you have tons of ways to generate level 1 bodies. Uh, so what do you need to send for the Inari thing? Let me pull that up, because a lot of people probably don't know uh, what that does. Uh, ba -ba -ba. Me. Yeah, here it is. This one I'll swap to English. Um... Uh, this is the one, right? Greater Inari Fire. You can special summon this card from hand or deck. By sending a spellcaster and a fire, a level four or lower fire you control to the graveyard. So le legit, it doesn't even start a chain. You just go into your deck and summon it. Uh, and when it's special summoned, by its effect, you can inflict damage to your opponent equal to the original attack of one monster they control. If this card is sent from field to grave, you can add it. The you can add the the trap card, spiritual fire art, from deck to your hand. Right. And so like it's. Uh, I guess it maybe does a little bit of burn damage if your opponent still has like the bomb token. Does the bomb token have even? Does the bomb token have attack, or is that first effect not relevant? I guess it could be if you go second, or um, if you go second, or they have like nib or something like that. It's one k, one k. Okay. The Possessed Charmers also do this, no? Uh, I think there's more cards that do this, yeah. But the important part here is that this searches the trap card that does burn damage, right? That's what he's there for. Uh, then moving on from that, it's IP, uh, Phoenix, which was great. You know, sometimes you draw Flamberg Dragon going second as a way to get out of hand and keep playing. Uh, Sunlight Wolf, Pit Knight Early as like a pivot option for when you're not FTKing. Uh, SP, the two Charmers. Uh, Celine, I don't know why more people don't play this in fire decks, but she was great to try to get into I mean, like this is early Appaloosa and literally a fire pile. Uh, the obvious Promethean Princess. I can't really say it any other way. Just because I can't think of anything to cut, because literally all of these cards came up on the day except for this. Because, it's a thousand, like, then you kill it for another 500. Yeah, so you do 1500 from that on the first turn. You. How big is Volcanic Emperor? It's like over 3000, right? Thirty-one, right? Thirty-one, twenty-five from Emperor. So you do fifteen hundred from that. You do twenty-five hundred from Emperor's effect. So that's four K. You do thirty-one hundred from the trap card when you tribute the Emperor. And where do you get the last fifteen? Oh, emission. Emission does 15. Okay, okay, okay. Like I said, pretty much every I time I went first, I have So to you have 8,600 damage in your standard, like, stuff. And in case your opponent... So what you said earlier is, like, if your opponent has, like, a Cosmic Cyclone... I mean, Cosmic Cyclone costs them 1,000 anyways. So even if they get to Cosmic Cyclone and stop some of the damage, they still have to pay 1,000, and you can, like, make up for the lost damage with, like... Scatter shots and stuff like that, right? Ideally, you want Reloading Grave to help have an extra 50. Yeah, which is the scatter shots, right? Yeah, okay. Um, the Amber Whale, which I know a lot of people have cut from their decks, but it actually does have cool synergy in this deck because it takes um, 500 for each special turn, too. Yeah, it's so like a we... mini Masquerade as well. Yeah. Very annoying overall. Not, not too bad, honestly. Not too bad. It's it's uh, it's probably better like this. It's probably better that you like combine a bunch of uh, different burn effects to do eight thousand rather than have one big one. Because if it would only be one effect, then if your opponent had a way to stop that one, you wouldn't have a win condition. But this one seems like even if your opponent has like an answer somewhere to one of your burn cards, you can just like make up for it in other places, and you're not completely dependent on one effect. 
it's low-key trickstar with big attack bounces which isn't a very nice way to describe a deck yeah it really isn't but uh that doesn't make necessarily make it bad it sounds fun to play it's another one of those instances where i think this deck looks very fun to play i don't know if it's that fun to play against especially if you just get fdk'd you know you do your princess lines you'll often make this first and then you can trooper to give them a bomb token and then bring back your princess popping this and the bomb token you gave them and then this will float into oh, right. whatever you use to make it which will be like sunlight wolf or something so you still like net extra bodies overall with it um, yeah, it's even better than what herman played at bologna because princess wasn't out yet so that that definitely gives you a lot more like lines and stuff that's that's pretty interesting and great for later uh and it also came up just having big stats when he left but yeah this guy was, was solid uh the Appaloosa, the Axis Code Talker uh, to just do OTK lines and the one Zombie Vampire as the only rank 8 for our um, Chorus package to try to help yeah, the so it's the like, other engines. Uh, the way I see it, it's like a, an updated version of Herman's YCS Bologna deck, which has Promethean Princess now, which is a huge boost, obviously, with all the Snake Eye cards being a lot better now. Plus, uh, they incorporated the FTK cards instead of Herman, who just tried to make a board with it, which is fair enough, I suppose. I would definitely still classify it as like somewhere in tier two or three. Like it's definitely, um, it's definitely, uh, yeah, I didn't. I wish I'm not saying you copied it, but it's like, it's a similar concept. Um, the, uh, it seems okay. It seems decent. I don't, I don't think it's, uh, I don't think it's like top tier material or anything, but like I said, that's not what today is about. Right. This, like I said, oftentimes you'll do this to try to go for lethal and if they have nib you can usually still kill them through it because of how the deck works because that's your goal when you go Bro has your goal time wins down path though i mean this is like uh this reminds me of when herman lost with this deck in time when the opponent activated kelbeck to mill them both for five which is a crazy thing to do against the against the volcanic deck with three scatter shots and like other cards that mill scatter shots if they get milled and somehow the tier player just ended up on top of the of herman with the with burn damage because they hit more like i think what happened was herman they resolved i think agido and kelbeck and herman only hit one single scatter shot and the opponent milled scatter shot and then put it back with a shuffler and then milled it with sprint again which meant that the opponent burned for a thousand and herman burned for 500 which is criminal activity when herman's deck had three sc scatter shot three rimfire and three blaze accelerator like, rim, uh, scatter shot burns for 500, but the other two, uh, no, especially specifically reload burns for 15 immediately. If they hit one reload, it's Jover. Put their but life points won. to zero, and that's usually what happens. Even Which if they still completely have all the followers in the world, criminal. it doesn't matter if they die. But before we go to the side real quick, I will explain like what the board the deck is trying to, to make is primarily. So the main thing you're trying to do when you go first with this is, like I said, FTK. And what that looks like is, oh, at least on the inboard... It was even worse than that. I had Reload in hand, and he used Mothman with two cards in hand. If I hit Mothman, he was down bad. Um, that's even more... Yeah, that's, that, that is even worse. You're right. <laughs> All that Sorry for like bringing that memory back up. Uh, ...is this. Uh, these are, these are like tertiary, but so what happens on your turn is you do a total of 4,000 damage to your opponent and then during the draw phase, there's an argument you should wait because of a few specific things, but if you do the combo, there's like ways to insulate you from all that. Uh, but you do 4,000 to them on your turn, then in the draw phase, you use this target. So 4,000 was, 4,000 was a thousand from Great Arenari Fire because of the token having a thousand attack. 500 when we destroyed the token and then 2,500 from Emperor, right? That was the 4,000 that we were talking about. Does 1550, and then you use this Tributing Emperor, and that does 31. So that's 8650 damage. Okay. Um, the additional components of the board that I try to go for, uh, and there's a myriad of ways to do it. And then Emission burns for half of the attack of the Emperor, which is 1550, and then this burns for 31 after we tribute the Emperor, right? Yeah. So if they, what you said earlier, if they have Cosmic... If you activate a mission and they chain Cosmic on the Kurenai, wouldn't they still die though? Instantly? Do you even need more? Because you said, so they're on 4,000, right? You activate a mission, they chain Cosmic, pay 1,000, 
They go to 3,000. Can't you just chain Kurinai? Tribute the thing, deal 31. Even if your emission doesn't have a monster anymore, like, it's still 8,000. And you do it pretty much every time. I was yeah, capping. Okay. <laughs> alongside this to play around, like, the nib input. Other quick play removal. Okay, so if your opponent plays MST, then, okay. <laughs> or books. Uh, do you have to tribute a face-up for Kurinai? I guess, ah, no, book would prevent the emission damage, though. Yeah. Arm combo. So that way, when you go to your... Because they, they do technically still get a turn, despite it being an FTK. When you try to go to the end phase, uh, if they nib... All right, I get it, I get it. I get it. Cool. Uh, interesting. Another interesting deck profile, okay.